Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating this nice perspective page view in Flutter. In this you can see that all the elements have a nice shadow attached to them and as the elements move they change in perspective and their shadow moves alongside. So this idea can be used in all sorts of gallery or music applications that you create using Flutter and it's going to be a quite interesting project so let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm on a simple Flutter app in which I just have this my home page and in my home page I have the scaffold which is covered in the safe area and in the scaffold I have this container as a body and a simple app bar. The container is further having a center widget which is currently empty and along with all this I have an images folder here in which I have 12 images to use in the page view. These images are also declared in the pubspec.yaml file to use in the application. And the first thing that we have to do now is to add a page view to our application in which we have to show these images. So let's do that. For adding the page view, I'll come down to the center and in this I'll add a child. And the child is going to be of type page view and for that I'm going to be using the constructor of page view dot builder. In this we have to pass the item builder which is going to be a function which takes a context and an index. And in this function we need to return a widget. But for now I'll just keep this empty. Other than this item builder, we also need to add the item count. At this point, I'll just add the count of 12 because we have 12 images right here. Other than this, we also need to add a physics just to add some dynamic effects to the page view. In this case, I'll just be using bouncing scroll physics, which is just a simple bouncing effect when the page view reaches its end. Along with this, the page view also requires a controller. And for the controller, what I'll do is I'll come up in the my homepage state. And here I'll add a page controller and name this underscore controller. We also need to initialize this controller. So for that, what I'll do is I'll override the init state function. And in this, I'll put the controller equal to page controller. And here I'll pass the initial page to two. And we also will add a viewport fraction. For the viewport fraction, what I'll do is I'll come back to the state. And here I'll create a new double called fraction and put it equal to 0.50. And if you don't know what page view is and how fraction works, I suggest you to take a look at the tutorial that I have linked in the description below. So once this fraction is added, I'll add the same fraction to the viewport fraction. Once everything is done, we need to come down to this image builder again. And here we need to return a widget. And because this widget needs to be a complex widget, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new stateless widget down here and name this my page. And in this my page, you can see that at this point, it's just returning a container. So in this container, I'll add a new child and here I'll use image.asset because we have the images as an asset in the application. So here I'll pass in the path. So the path is going to be images slash image and here we need to pass in the index. So just to explain to you what I'm doing, you can see that here in the images folder, I have every image named as image underscore one underscore two underscore three and so on so that we can use the index as the name of the image. So for that, what I can do is I can come down here to the my page and here I need to add a new final double and this is going to be a number. And I also need to create a constructor and in here I need to pass in the named parameter and this is going to be this dot number. So once we get the number, we can add that to the image name like this. The reason for adding one to this number value is because the index is going to start from zero and the images start from one. So basically, each time we pass in the index, the image is going to be an incremented number. So if we pass in the index of zero, first image is going to be displayed. Other than this, I also need to add a fit property to the image. And this is going to be boxfit.fill. Once this is done, we can return the my page from this item builder. And here we need to pass in the number as index.2 double. So the reason that I'm converting this index to a double here is because we need to pass this as a double value to the my page. And the reason we need this number value as a double is because we'll be using this number to calculate the perspective also. And here I've noticed that I forgot to add .jpg at the end of the image name. At this point, if I run the app and go back to the emulator, you can see that we have the images, but they're stretched to the height of the screen. So the problem here is that by default, the page view takes the maximum space available to it. And because we have all the images in one by one ratio, so what we can do here is we can wrap the page view in an aspect ratio and for this aspect ratio we need to pass in the aspect ratio which is going to be 1. And for now I also reset the fraction to 1.0. And at this point if I run the app and go back to the emulator 
You can see that all the images appear as a perfect square and I'm able to transition between them using the page view. And as soon as I reach the end of the elements, you can see that we have this nice bounce effect because of this bouncing physics that we added to the page view. Next thing that we need to do is we need to use this controller to track the page of the page view which is currently being displayed on the screen. To detect the current page that is being displayed by the page view, we can use this controller and we can get the value of page by using underscore controller dot page. But at this point, we don't have any way to pass this information to my page. So for that, we'll have to use the provider. Currently, you can see that provider is at version 4.0.5 and we'll add the same to our application. So I'll go to the pubspec.yml file and here in the dependencies section, I'll add the provider package and click on packages upgrade. Once the package is added, I'll just close the pubspec.yml file. And now what we need to do is we need to create a new change notifier. For that, I'll just go to the zlib folder and here I'll create a new dart file and I'll just name this page view holder. And in this, I'll just create a new class called page view holder and this will extend change notifier and make sure you select the change notifier from the foundation package. In this class, I'll add a variable called value of type double. And this is going to be the value of the current page of the page view. And because this is a change notifier, in this case, I'll also create a setter in which I'll call the notify listeners function, which is given to us by this change notifier. And this will notify all the listeners of this change notifier that is page view holder. And along with this, we might also want to initialize this value. So for this, I'll just create a new constructor and name this page value holder. And here I'll pass in the named parameter and call this dot value. Once this is done, I'll come back to the main.dart file and here I'll come up in the state and create a new instance of page view holder. And I'll name this instance holder. What we need to do now is we need to track that as soon as the user swipes on the page view, we need to get the changed value of page from this controller and set that to this holder. And for that, what I'll do is I'll come down here in the init state function. And after initializing the controller, what I'll do is I'll call a function of add listener from this controller. And in this, I'll pass a function. And this function will be called each and every time the value of this controller is changed. So in this, what I need to do is I need to use this holder and use the function set value. And here, I'll pass in the new value of controller.page. So now, every time the value of this controller changes, we set the new value to this page view holder using this set value function. And if you don't know what provider is and how to use the change notifier, I suggest you to take a look at the tutorial via the link in the description below. So now what we need to do is we need to come down to this page view builder and I need to wrap this page view with a change notifier provider. And I won't use the default constructor of change notifier provider. Instead, I'll use the value constructor. And in this, I'll also pass in the type and the type will be page value holder because that is the change notifier that we're using in this case. And for the value, I'll pass in the same holder that we created here in the state. So I'll come down here to the change notifier and pass in the holder. So at this point in our application, every time the value of page in this page view changes, we use the controller to get the new value and we give it to the holder and the holder then gives it to the provider, which then provides this value to each and every listener. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to come down to this my page and here we need to check if the value is being updated. Now in this my page, what I'll do is I'll come down to this build function and get the value from the provider in this way. And once we get the value, what I'll do for now is I'll just print this value on the debug console. And here I need to pass in the value as a string. And I also need to close the app and run the app again. And as the app runs, you can see that we have this error that the getter value was called on null. And this error is because we have not initialized the holder at this point. So I need to come up here in the init state function and here I need to initialize the holder and put it equal to a new instance of page view holder and I'll pass in a value of 2.0. And the reason for passing a value of two here is because we have set the value of initial page to two for the page view. At this point, if I run the application again and open up the debug console and go to the emulator, as soon as I scroll on the pages, you can see that the updated value of page is being updated on the console also because of the debug statement that we placed in the my page that is right here. Now, by using the current index of the page and the value given to us by the provider, we can check if the page is the next page, current page, or the previous page. For doing that, what we need to do is we need to create a new double and name this difference. And this is going to be equal to number minus value. And by this, you can detect 
that if the difference is negative, then this is the left side page. If the difference is zero, then this is the current page. And if the difference is positive, then this is the next page. And along with this, we also need to add in a new final that is of type double and we'll name this fraction. And I'll also add this to the constructor. And the reason for adding this fraction will be clear to you in just a while. And we'll also need to pass in the fraction value here in the my page instance in item builder. And the value of this fraction is equal to the fraction that we declared up in the my home page state. Coming back to the my page, I'll just remove these comments. What we need to do is we need to wrap this container with a transform widget. And in this transform, we need to pass in the value of a new transform. For the value of this transform, I need to pass in an instance of metrics 4, which will look something like this. This tutorial is not a good place to explain to you how metrics transforms work because that in itself is a detailed topic. And for that, I'll be creating a separate video. For ease of your knowledge, I have added these comments. And by looking at these comments and the values that have passed, you can check out the article for metrics 4 that I've linked in the description below. And you can understand the basic functionality of metrics from there. At this point, what I'll do is I'll use this PV metrics and pass this as a value to this transform. And also we'll need to change the alignment to fractional offset dot center so that every transformation takes place from the center of this image. What I'll also do is I'll come up here in the state and here I'll change the value of fraction to 0.50 again. At this point, if I run the app and go back to the emulator, you can see that now the perspective of the images changes as we swipe across them. So basically what's happening is that by using this fraction, we're telling the page view to show the 50% of the previous and the next page area along with the main page. And because of this, we're getting the 50% of the previous and the next page along with the current page. In other words, you can also say that by using the fraction, we're changing the X scale of the current image. And this is also the reason we're passing the fraction to my page also, because by using this fraction, and the statement here in the metrics, we're changing the Y scale according to the fraction. And because of these two things, we're equally decreasing the scale of the X and the Y axis, which is required to keep the image as a perfect square. This tutorial can be a bit hard if you find yourself struggling in mathematics. But at the end, these are quite simple concepts and if you put a little bit of time in it, you can understand them in a much better way. At this point, what we need to do is we need to add the shadows to these elements and shadows are nothing but these same transforms, but rotated at a particular angle. For that, what I'll do is I'll just cut this transform and in place of this transform, I'll add a stack. And in the stack, I'll set the value of fit and put it to stack fit dot expand. And I'll also set the alignment and put it to alignment dot center. Along with this, I'll add the children property and here I'll add the transform again. At this point, I'll just copy this transform and create a new copy of it above. And this is going to be the first child of this stack because the shadow needs to be below the main transform. For this transform, we won't be using the PV metrics. And for this, I have created another matrix that is called bottom metrics. Or I can rename this to shadow metrics. In the same way, I've added the comments for ease of your knowledge. And what I'll do is I'll use the shadow metrics and put it to this transform. What I also need to do is I need to remove this image from here and in place of this, I'll add a simple decoration. So this decoration is basically a box decoration, which is having a box shadow property, which takes a list of box shadows and this I'm passing a box shadow, which is of color black and is having a blur radius of 10 and a spread radius of 1.0. This is important for making the shadow look more real. And for this transform, I'll also need to change in the alignment and set it to bottom center because we need the shadow to begin at the bottom of these images. Once this is done, I'll just run the app and go to the emulator. At this point, you can see that all the images have shadow at their bottom, but these shadows need a bit of refining. So for that, I'll come back to the code and I'll wrap this transform with an animated opacity. And in this, I'll pass in the duration and set the duration to be of milliseconds of 100. And along with this, I'll also pass in the opacity and put this equal to one minus difference dot absolute. What is happening here is that the difference can range from minus one to one. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting the difference to an absolute value. So the value of difference will now be zero to one and I'm subtracting that value from one. So basically what's happening is that when the difference is one, the opacity will be zero. And when the difference is zero, the opacity will be one. 
In simple words, what you can say that when the value of difference is zero, that is for the current page, the opacity will be one. And as the pages move left or right, the value of difference will also increase and hence the opacity will decrease. And at this point, if I run the app and go to the emulator, and as the app starts and you move across the elements, you can see that an error is being displayed. And this error is because the value of difference only exists for the current and the left and the right element. And because of this, the opacity of all the other elements does not get a valid value. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to wrap this animated opacity with a condition. So in this, I'll pass if the difference is less than or equal to 1.0, and the difference is greater than or equal to minus 1.0 only in that case we need to pass in the animated opacity and for using this spread operators you'll also need to upgrade the SDK constraints and for that in Android Studio you can just click on alt enter and click on upgrade the SDK constraints once this is done we can run the app now you can see that there are no errors in the app and the app is running smoothly this tutorial can be a bit hard if you find yourself struggling in mathematics and because of the same reason I'm also going to release a package in which you can just add the package to your application and use this type of page view. I'll shortly be adding the link to that package in the description of this video so you can get the package from there. And if you find this video useful make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider supporting me on Patreon for more Flutter videos coming your way on Retro Portal Studio. See you next time. Peace.